Right, uh, today's little project is I've just had to replace a dimmer switch where one has failed. So I thought I'd just rip it apart and just see exactly what has failed with it. Now the symptom of this one is the knob just turns and turns and turns. It's supposed to go all the way to one end and then click off and then click on and turn up to the other end and stop. But no, no click, just turns and turns and turns. So I would imagine the potentiometer is completely dead. So let's, without further ado, rip this one apart and have a quick look to see what exactly has gone wrong with it. I've taken the knob and retaining screw off, back just pulls off and everything falls out. No surprises with the circuitry, it's quite an old one this one, so the circuitry is pretty primitive. Let's have a look at that closer up. Wrong mic uh, camera, there we go. It's the typical Thyristor uh, triggering circuit. So we've got a huge coil held in place by a piece of cardboard. That's really, really advanced, isn't it? Cardboard, wow, unheard of. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, the shaft of the potentiometer just twists and twists and twists. There's a bit of a detent there where it wants to sit and another one up there-ish, not as much. But down here, definitely, it wants to uh, sit in a, a groove there. Let's see if we can actually see the wiper as it goes around, if it goes around. Is it even gripping the wiper? No, I can't even see the wiper inside there. You'd expect to see in this gap here the wiper going past as I turn it round. But there's nothing. Okay, let's see if we can take this down any further. Yeah, that comes off. I'm not looking to repair this at all. It's going straight in the bin once I'm finished here. I'm just interested to see just how this potentiometer has failed. So this piece of highly insulative cardboard can rip off. I don't want that. Get rid of that. Very, very simple and primitive circuit. Okay, there's nothing really that I can say about the circuit. You've got an ST TXAL two two eight BS, which is probably just a simple thyristor. That looks like a Zener diode they're using for the switching of it to set the uh, the switch off voltage or switch on voltage rather to charge this rather primitive looking multi-layer capacitor up to the 30 odd volts needed to switch on the thyristor. I could, I suppose, reverse engineer the circuit, but I can't be bothered really. There's no uh, benefit to it. There's so it's such a simple circuit, and there's so many uh, examples of it online. Just Google uh, thyristor dimmer circuit. You'll find many examples. Um, okay, let's see if I can get this potentiometer to bits. If I can get the Tabs levered up. Let's find a small screwdriver. That should do it just to get it started and see exactly how it has failed internally. Three, four tabs lifted. I don't want to damage my nice screwdriver, so back to the spudger now they're lifted. So the first layer 
of the potentiometer is the shaft and the shaft is broken. You can see in here, the black parts here are what's left of the shaft. The gap in the middle is the split where it would clip in. You can still see a bit of the split here and that has completely and utterly sheared off. So I wonder if oops, I can turn this manually to make it click. Nope. Okay, the next layer is the carbon track. Let's cut the pins of this. Where have my cutters gone? There they are. Cut the pins off to make this easier. As I say, I'm not going to want to repair this. Here's the carbon track. This is basically a resistor that's exposed to the elements and the wiper, which is here, connects this inner track to the outer track. It's made of carbon with a resistance and the closer to one end it is, the lower the resistance to that end, the higher the resistance to the other end. It's pretty simple. So within here, <coughs> we now have the wiper mechanism. If I can get this out. The wiper is just a piece of sprung brass with little contacts on it which, as I say, connects the inner track to the outer track. And when you turn it, it just connects to a different part of the track. The lower side of the, the um, shaft, the wiper unit, has a, an extra shaft on it which has this little cam connected on it, just slips over, and that turns around, and if we can see inside here, has this little sprung piece here, which is basically the switch. I don't know if I can easily get the switch part out, let's rip this off. There we go. Brute force over ignorance. <coughs> the underside is exactly the same construction, just four little tabs. Lever those up. And spudger. And this is the switch unit. It's still in one piece. It's got a little heat stake there holding it together, but that easily breaks off. And this is the switch. That part goes inside here. So once the, uh, the cam turns, it pushes the lever there and opens it up and then click click theory as you turn it just breaks that that connection and that's basically what there is inside that potentiometer the uh, potentiometer is so old that the cam itself has completely snapped in half I could replace the potentiometer, but I don't see why I should bother. I've just replaced the light fitting with a just an ordinary switch, which means we can now replace the light bulb with an LED bulb without having to get a, a fancy dimmable one, which often don't work anyway. Um, I could super glue that together and restore the, pot the uh, potentiometer back to use, but looking at that track and the corrosion around there and lack of much carbon left, I think the uh, potentiometer itself is pretty much useless. So there you go, so it's a quick look inside a potentiometer and see why it's failed. Mm -hmm.